The next thing I'm going to do is, is set the, the levels up for the footpaths. As I mentioned at the start, I already have an alignment here um, called R path 1. Uh, this is the existing um, alignment for the, the right foot path. All we're going to do uh, on the right hand side is match the RFPI code onto this blue alignment which represents uh, the existing footpath alignment and I'm just going to match uh, the level onto that. Uh, for the outer section of the footpath I'm just going to match that to the surface. On the left hand side we're going to do something a little bit different but I'll, I'll get to that um, in a sec. So if I open up the design data form for Alexandra Street, the first variation I'm going to use is called uh, set code levels to match surface. And if you're doing a lot of road reconstruction projects, you'll use this particular variation a lot. So the code I want is RFP inner. I'll do this for the whole length. The surface we're matching to is the NS. The alignment I'm going to match to is R path 1. You do have the option to also specify an additional height adjustment so I can match this code to the surface and raise it up or down. So if I select on Add Update, you can see there now that RFPI has been matched down uh, to the surface and we're getting that, that varying cross fall. Uh, now for the uh, the right footpath outer, um, I just want to match that level uh, to the surface. So I'm going to create a copy of the last variation I added, but tell the software that the RFP uh, outer code will just match the natural surface and I will blank out optional alignment. So uh, there's the... Uh, the existing uh, footpath shown. On the left hand side I'm going to do something a little bit different. When you're using advanced road design you're always working out from the last code that was inserted but in this case what I want to do is work backwards from the boundary. So I want my footpath to run minus uh, two and a half percent uh, from the boundary on the natural surface and then I want a varying cross fall from the footpath back to the uh, the back of curb here. So I'm going to show you an approach to do this and I'm going to show you a variation um, that will allow us to, to do it. The first thing I want to do is open up the template editor and I'm going to create a new template which will be called footpath. And this uh, template will just have one code, um, horizontal distance 1.5, slope minus 2.5%, and I'll call this code RFP for right foot path. Click OK. So what I want to do now is create a string along the boundary. So I've got uh, the alignment called LBDY. Uh, this string will be matched down to the natural surface and I can um, use the create draped string command uh, to create this type of string nice and quick. So the alignment will be LBDY. It'll be draped automatically down to the natural surface. We're going to apply that footpath uh, template set some spacing, and set the update mode to automatic. Drape strings are really useful for uh, creating existing um, uh, strings that, that, that might be matched down to a, a natural surface or something. So if I select uh, update all to that, hit yes, uh, we've now created that string. So if I open up the vertical grading along the boundary, you can see all the levels have been matched down to the natural surface. If I right click, um, you can see that footpath template applied. So what I want to do is tell the software that my footpath on Alexandra Street, I want the codes LFPO, uh, LFPO um, and, R and LFPI to adopt these levels and offset on the string here. And the result will be 
a varying crossfall from the end of the footpath back to the curb. So essentially working, uh, rather than working out from the template, we're working backwards um, in. So if I open up the design data form for Alexandra Street, the variation I'm going to use is called copy codes. I'm going to apply this along the entire length. I want to copy the codes from the boundary. The copy method will be full position, so my codes on my template will adopt the level and offset. And then it's just a matter of linking up the codes on your road with the codes on the string. So the uh, LFP inner will be the same as the RFP code, and the LFP outer be the same as the center line. So if I select the add update to that, you can see here that we've pushed our uh, template out at a varying crossfall, but we're maintaining two and a half percent back from the boundary line. So uh, that's an example of how you can use uh, the copy codes variation. So we've applied, uh, we'll set up two footpaths. Uh, one where we've, we've just set the, uh, the levels to uh, the surface and on the left hand side we're working back from the boundary. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do uh, before we move on to the next video is just do a, a driveway check and I'll, I'll show you how you can uh, use the driveway clearance tools in, in ARD to uh, confirm that our driveways are going to work. So on the ribbon, uh, there's a panel here called driveways. First thing you need to do is run this command called set layer. Software will create a layer based on the uh, road name that we pick. And it's this layer that we draw polylines, which represent the, uh, the horizontal geometry of, of uh, our driveways. So on the, the one driveway, you might um, draw multiple uh, polylines for, for different um, approaches into that driveway. Uh, I'm just going to draw the, the single polyline here. Next step is to go to the create option. So I pick my uh, main alignment and I set up the uh, vertical geometry for my driveway. So at the invert code, the uh, curb shape is going to change to a layback. You can create your own shapes uh, in ARD. I could put an, an optional end shape in, so maybe we're tying back into a footpath uh, that's matched to the, the, the boundary. Um, it's not the case for us. I then need to set the extents on the left and the right, so the distance to the boundary is 7.5 metres on the left and the right. The target surface is NS, so the software will show that um, surface profile beyond our design extents. Um, so the IP is created at the, the road and the curb are locked, we can't edit those, uh, but we'll be able to do design the profile for the row of the driveway if we need to. The next thing we do is set some vehicles that we want to check. I'm just going to specify B85 and B99 and then I select on create driveways. If I then pick on the design command and select on that polyline, a vertical profile for that driveway will appear. Uh, I generally set the exaggeration to 1 so it looks a little bit flatter. But you can see as I move my mouse in the green tracker in the drawing showing me where I am. So these red IPs, these are locked IPs, you can see the layback shape and the road, and then um, uh, I've got the uh, the locked IPs back to the natural surface at the end there. To do the driveway check, you select this button uh, with the, the vehicle and the green tick and the red cross. Um, there are a number of ways to show um, information or show the clashes. If you just tick on clash positions, it'll show you locations. Uh, only when the vehicle uh, clearance will not work. If you select on mouse forward, you can move your mouse within the, uh, the profile here. These markers here represent clashes. So if you see those, then uh, you know that the vehicle 
or the driveway is not going to work. Um, I could go back to my road cross section and start playing with the levels on my um, curb to, to get that to work. Um, alternatively, I could add IPs uh, within the driveway and, and start playing around with that until I got something that, that was going to work. So this is a quick run through of, of how the driveway checking tool works and you could open up uh, multiple um, profiles for, for the driveways on another monitor and as you're working on the design um, you can um, check to see whether that, that driveway is going to work or not.